Hello there, Lunar Squadron, and welcome back to the channel as we continue our character class breakdown series. This time, we are going to be tackling one of the lesser talked about character classes, but in fact, one that we have the most confirmed details about, that being the Protocol Droid class. Now, in this video, we are going to go over all of the confirmed characters who are Protocol Droids, characters that could potentially be Protocol Droids, and more importantly, we are going to be talking about those upgradable perks and what exactly they might do as you are trying to translate all of those languages throughout the galaxy. But before we get into all of this, Andreas, I believe we have a brief few messages. That's right, Nick, we do. First off, I just wanted to remind all of you that we are still planning on doing a Q&A giveaway where we will be giving away a brand new mystery LEGO Star Wars LEGO set after our breakdown series. As you guys are probably aware by now, we only have one more character class, the Astromech Droid, to break down before we do that. So you're going to want to get involved by following the three steps to entering in on the giveaway. All you have to do is like this video, leave a Q&A comment down below, and make sure that you are subscribed to the channel for a chance to win. Now before we get into the discussion of the Protocol Droid, I do have a question for Bosk, and it is about one of Bosk's close bounty hunter friends. Bosk, I know that Forlom is a bounty hunter, but I know he's also kind of a Protocol Droid, so what's he gonna be in the game? Like, give us the inside scoop. Is he gonna be a Protocol Droid, or is he gonna be a bounty hunter? Because I wanna know. You are my prey. <laughs> ah yes, Bosk, mystical as ever. Anyway, let's get into the video. This is Lunar Squadron standing by. We are ready to make the jump to hyperspace. On my mark, Lunar Squadron. Alright, so I just want to say first and foremost that Nick and I are doing this video for one very special subscriber who specifically requested this video. That's right, Ippa Harda, our favorite Finn, requested this one. So this one's for you, Ippa. Uh, we know that you're looking uh, most forward to the Protocol Droid class and... We know why. It's because these protocol droids are not going to be pushovers anymore. These aren't droids that, you know, just walk around and open terminals. No, they have some really cool abilities this time around. But first, before we get into those abilities that they're going to be able to do, which are honestly pretty aggressive for protocol droids, but like, I'm here for it. Uh, we want to list off all of the protocol droids that we can look forward to using in this game. Obviously, we've only seen one such protocol droid repeatedly throughout these trailers, and that is C-3PO, our favorite protocol droid, but we can also expect some others, such as the Death Star droid from Episode 4, TC-14 from The Phantom Menace, as well as TC-4 from The Phantom Menace, and as we said in the intro, there's also a possibility that Forlom could have a protocol droid variant, even though he's most likely going to be a bounty hunter. But I mean, you never know, right, Nick? Yeah, you're absolutely correct. But the one thing that we do know is the fact that there will be multiple protocol droids. While, yes, we have only seen C-3PO confirmed to be a protocol droid in this game from the gameplay overview trailer, we see his icon on the character list, and then when they're talking about protocol droids, we only see C-3PO, and then throughout the rest of the trailer, we only ever get to see C-3PO. So that is the only droid that we know for sure is going to be a protocol droid. However, there is a reason to believe and a reason to know that he is not going to be the only protocol droid. And just the fact that TT wouldn't make an entire character class just for one character. That wouldn't make a ton of sense. But if you take a look at this shot from Tatooine where Luke is running up on this little Womp Rat minigame on Mos Eisley, you will see that there are two terminals for two separate protocol droids that have to be initiated probably at the same time or within a certain set of time. So to me, this just confirms that there will be multiple protocol droid characters in this game. So that is the big takeaway for me. I know, Andreas, you just said that they're beyond just, you know, terminal button pushers and they have special abilities. But I guess the first thing I had to talk about when it comes to protocol droids is the terminal. So now that we've gotten the whole terminal thing out of the way and we can move on to better and bigger things, why don't we go ahead and jump into these abilities? Because like you said, 
These protocol droids are not your father's protocol droids. They can do some pretty crazy things. You are totally right, Nick. These protocol droids don't just sit around and open up these terminals. They've got a lot of cool abilities, so we're going to start going through them one at a time. Uh, of course, we are going to start off with what we saw in the gameplay overview trailer, and that is C-3PO separating as, you know, uh, the commentator says, put your better half to work as a protocol droid. We can see that you have to separate yourself in two so that C-3PO can make his way through the pretty narrow tunnel that leads leads into the next room. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to say, well, that's just enabling you to go to another terminal. How is this, you know, cool and aggressive? Well, I turn your attention to the perks page where we see one of the perks, the top perk, shows a protocol droid, presumably C-3PO here, separating, and there's an electrical shock. Now, we got confirmation from a GameSpot article interview with uh, senior producer James Burjon where he commented on what this perk exactly does. He says, quote, for example, you can upgrade protocol droids, I guess he says droids, so that's also confirmation that there's multiple, uh, to emit shock waves when they detach their upper and lower halves, stunning all enemies in a small radius. So we're talking like separation and electrical shock. Like that's pretty cool. You know, when it comes to this first perk dealing with this, I think it's pretty obvious and pretty clear. In my opinion, this is just as you upgrade it, that shock ability is just going to get more powerful, perhaps have a higher radius, can impact more enemies. This one is pretty straightforward, but this second perk, this one is a little confusing, mainly just because of that money icon that is on that speech bubble, the credit icon. Now, we do have a couple ideas about what exactly this could be dealing with. This is more just pure speculation on our part. And, you know, one thing that we thought is perhaps having a protocol droid in your party as you're playing will perhaps increase the amount of studs that you get for completing missions, whether that be the main story missions or perhaps other side missions. We did see when we were breaking down the uh, the Coruscant gameplay, when we were looking, we saw that store in the background that was dealing with headwear, and we speculated on the potential for there to be stores where you could go purchase items. Now, of course, we do not know if that is confirmed whether or not there will be stores where you could go purchase items, but one thing that this could be dealing with, if that is the case, if there are stores, is the fact that it has a credit on it and so perhaps protocol droids can negotiate lower prices for these items if these stores do in fact exist in this game we do know that they at least have signs advertising stores we do not know whether or not we can go in them so that's just another idea that i just thought of for that second perk we also discuss the idea that perhaps there will be like translation mini games that will reward you with studs for upon completing them because you know that is exactly what a protocol droid is here for is to come you know to translate for you and i know andres you did say that there was one thing in regards to this icon related to lego star wars the force awakens that's right. I mean, it's with that whole translation bit, we were actually able to do these missions in Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens, if you guys recall, where, you know, there were NPCs standing around who you would walk up to, and then they would say some alien gibberish, and C-3PO would then translate for them, and it would send you off on a mission. Now, I guess this kind of fuels one of my theories here about how this perk works, which is that you will see people similarly standing on the side of the road uh, who are speaking alien gibberish, and then you will have to translate for them, and they will have, you know, some burning need. Like, for example, I need some power converters. So you know that you gotta go to Toshi Station and pick up some power converters. Pick up some power converters. So once you go pick up the power converters and deliver them to this NPC, they will then give you some credits, of course, to thank you for your good deed. Now, this whole thing, this whole perk might mean that you get more money when you do these missions and that, you know, as you upgrade the protocol droid, there's more return on missions such as these, which I'll call translation missions just for uh, brevity here. But I think my favorite perk and favorite ability that the protocol droid is going to have is yet to be talked about. It's that third one. Nick, what do we think this one's about? Well, to be completely honest with you, Andreas, to me, this just looks like a blaster bolt reflecting off of a protocol droid's body, which just tells me that this perk will deal with damage resistance when it comes to playing as a protocol droid. 
as you upgrade it, you become more damage resistance. Perhaps your health increases a little bit. I think this one is pretty clear cut and dry. Perhaps the most clear cut and dry out of all of them besides the first one. Just since we have that quote from the TT dev confirming what exactly that perk will be dealing with when it comes to the ability. But to me, this one's pretty simple. It's a blaster bolt deflecting off of a, a protocol droid's body. It's not damaging him. So this is going to deal with some sort of damage reduction or perhaps health boost in regards to protocol droids. Yeah, this one is honestly going to be a literal lifesaver for protocol droids because in the past when you were using a protocol droid and you were getting shot at, there's nothing you can do. But now you can put on, you know, this armor which will deflect blaster bolts. It's almost as good, presumably, as the perk that we saw for the Jedi, which is a blaster bolt deflection perk for blocking with the lightsaber. This one, who knows, might deflect and return fire to people that are shooting the protocol droid, and that might, you know, increase the odds of that happening. Uh, I mean, we all know about protocol droids telling us the odds, so. The possibility of successfully navigating an asteroid field is approximately 3,720 to 1. Never tell me the odds. And then we have the fourth perk, which this is the one that we're not too sure about. And I mean, we've seen this repeatedly by now. There's always one perk that kind of gives us some fits here. But this one just looks a little obscure. I think my first impression of this perk was that it is some sort of a turret, which if it is a turret and we are going to be seeing protocol droids that, you know, have, I guess, auto fire guns that pop out of them or something like that, like... That's like, sign me up. I'm going to be using protocol droids all day long. And uh, that just sounds really cool to me. Uh, I mean, what, what other ideas do we have about this one, Nick? Yeah, you know, I could see the turret being a potential option just because the protocol droids will serve in more of that support role when it comes to the character classes. And those turrets are usually reserved for more of those support character classes in other games such as battlefront 2 it's you know reserved for the officer which is supposed to be more of that support role which is i think what the protocol droid class will be serving in for this game when i first looked at this perk i thought maybe a power drill maybe they're able to fix certain things you know the health of your ship for example or you know fix broken terminals that you need to access they can restart them and reactivate them this one honestly i really am not quite sure what we're looking at when you look at the icon art it really is not clear at all like there's two arrows on the body of the icon what the hell is that dealing with to me i just it just kind of looks like a handheld a handheld power drill i really am not sure honestly andres your idea is just as good as mine and your guys's ideas out there are just as good as ours so let us know down below in the comments what exactly you think this fourth perk could be dealing with we would love to know what you think but otherwise guys let us know down below in the comments what you think of the protocol class who do you think will be a protocol droid in this game besides c3po honestly your guess is just as good as ours i think tt is going to have to get very creative let us know down below are you excited to play as a protocol droid and go around shocking people c3po because i know both andreas and i are you know honestly it would be a ton of fun to body slam people because apparently R2 can do that in this game and then shock the hell out of him with C-3PO. That could be a cool little 1-2 combo that we've never seen from this duo before. So this this character class is going to be a lot, of, a lot of fun to use. Anyway, guys, I think that is going to do it for us for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, we will see you all 